I'm writing a book right now about the death of Santini. And so all my, I, you, the whole family's terrified because they know what I'm capable of doing with a human reputation. And their wives are terrified when I'm saying, are you going to be good to the wives, Pat? <laughs> I said, no, no, this will all end up in divorce court. It's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be awful. Well, it doesn't bother me as much as it does other people. You know, I, I've certainly found that out. And, you know, and when I first wrote The Great Santini, I was so angry with my father and so enraged by what I wanted. He put the family through. And the irony that when The Great Santini came out, you know, Dad hated it, just hated it. And he thought I'd lied about him. I said, I didn't lie about a thing. I said, Dad, I put in that book scenes where you were nice to your children. You were never nice to your children. And so what I think Dad did is model himself after the great Santini in the novel, not after. John loved him, didn't you, John? I mean, you I loved your dad. Yeah. One of the nicest men I think I've ever met. But I didn't have him as a dad. Mm -hmm. Was he different outwardly? Oh, he was outwardly. Completely, he was, completely he, different. It changed everything. He w he was very different after that book came out. Yeah. yeah. I think I think if there was ever an instance of a man reading, reading the tea leaves and weeping, and, and didn't he go off for a while, Pat? After it he first did. came out, he went. His out. family called me up and says, um, "Nice going, Pat. Your father's committed suicide." <laughs> and he just disappeared. It was about a week, and um, I was frantic. His brothers and sisters were mauling me on a daily basis. You know, you'll never see him again. Don running a Piper Cub and flew into a mountain. And so what I liked that John was a witness to is after that book came out, um, Dad became charming. He found out he had a personality that went over very well. He signed my books with me, not just the great Santini, every book I ever wrote after this. And I'd say, Dad, why are you signing my books? He said, I am the seed, son. I am the source. I said, I still don't understand why you're signing my book. <laughs> you know, just, no one does this, but we got to enjoy it. And his favorite part in every signing we did together was, and John's going to do this to me someday, I know, is Dad would have a line and I'd have a line. And then Dad, He'd look over, he'd check, and he'd say, my line is longer. <laughs> so it got to be, it was a very healing thing, as it turned out. Uh, well, I, I saw it very vividly, and I have a vivid recollection of, of coming to your apartment in Atlanta. Um, and your dad was there, mm -hmm. and I, can, I don't remember if he was, did he live there at, for, at, at any time? He was visiting. Yeah, he was visiting. He came over. He was living in Atlanta. Yeah, he came over every morning for and coffee. He came over every morning for coffee, and I was there. I had spent the night there, and Don came over for coffee. And um, I watched the interchange between them. And, of course, I had read The Great Santini, and I, I had only met Don very briefly in the last week at the Citadel uh, just to shake his hand and say hello. So I really didn't know him at all. My impression of him was from the book. And if you read The Great Santini, mm -hmm. this is not the warmest, fuzziest guy that you could throw your arms around. So when I saw the interaction between Pat and Don that, that day, I, real, I realized someone had turned a big corner and it had to have been Don because he was, not, he was no longer the person portrayed in the book. And... Um, I don't know if you remember that. That's the um, that's the same day. That same day, your galleys for the first four or five chapters of the Lords of Discipline came in. Is that right? Yep. And you let me read the galleys, and as you handed them to me, you said, "John, I hope you don't mind. I took some liberties. I 
I made you the homosexual captain of the football team. <laughs> and I said, oh, Pat, why would, you know, why would I, why would I mind? <laughs> but anyway, he was just yanking my chain. Oh. But um, anyway, uh, it, was a, it was an instructive visit. And later, Don, when my oldest son arrived at the Citadel, Don couldn't have been nicer. He brought him donuts and looked out for him in a hundred ways that, uh, whereas I think he never visited you once at the Citadel, did he? None. That's what I was going to ask. You said you met him the last week? I think I, ah, uh, this is in dispute. Oh. Yes, he, this is in dispute. I have a recollection of coming outside of the barracks. Uh, no, we, we lived in the same barracks, number four barracks. And I have a recollection of coming outside the barracks and being introduced to him in the last week of school. Pat insists that he is checked with brothers and sisters and he wasn't there. Hmm. So, you know, I could be wrong. Now, did he, did, did your father develop that relationship with your brothers and sisters afterwards? Yes. Okay, In so fact, they were to... first to forgive him before I was. Okay. It took me a long time. She had asked about your uh, riding Don around in the final days. Um, he was ill. He was very ill, and it seemed relaxing. And a lot of the family was coming down. And so I, I'd cook for the family. And toward the end of that summer, um, Dad was receiving 25 gifts a day. So I was cooking shrimp and grits, so I you know, couldn't even look at a shrimp. After that, I was cooking stews, I was cooking she crab soup, I was you know, doing this. And I could tell Dad liked it. I tell he liked it. And uh, I want you to cook this tonight, son. And so I'd make crab cakes, <laughs> the ubiquitous crab cake in my life. And it turned out to be a good summer. The kids and I wanted Dad to go out, you know, well loved, well taken care of. So the boat rides around Fripp Island were, you know, one of the ways we did that and accomplished that. And Dad would come out and stay with me during the day. And, you know, he was such a pain. And he, you know, like me, was having trouble walking. And he would, I'd hear, I'd be back writing, and I'd hear, bam, bam, bam. And he had his cane. <laughs> and so I'd come out, that was my signal. And I'd say, what you need, Dad? He said, make me a sandwich. I said, put a please on that cane. And he says, make me a sandwich, or I'm going to tell your sister, Cassie. <laughs> and I said, you know, I'm not trembling when I hear the name of my sister, Cassie, my younger sister, Cassie. But anyway, it was, it was all kind of a show. Dad would go home, spend the night with Cassie and Bobby Joe, and she would do his medicine. She took care of his medicine. She's a nurse. And you know, it turned out to be a great time. You know, I think it was a, a nice time, not for Dad because he was dying, but certainly for his friends and his family. And they all came down that summer. Uh, we had a birthday party for him that April. The family bought him a car, a red car, and he drove that thing all over the country. And he's the only person I ever saw who could take chemotherapy, and it was like him taking ice cream. He didn't do anything. 